realistic. If uh, there's some chiropractors out there listening now, um, not much going on as far as modalities in the practice. So it was nice when I came across laser therapy, and my story started when I um, severely sprained my ankle. I'm married to a chiropractor, I have acupuncturists in my office, I have massage therapists, active release, I have physiotherapists that are friends. Everybody tried working on my foot, it got better, but I could never run. Anytime I got on the treadmill or went outside for a run, um, it just continued to hurt. I could make it make it one or two kilometers and then I'd just give up because of the pain. So my wife was working at another clinic with a different type of laser and she said, come try this laser thing. I did, within three weeks uh, I was running again. So I was sold on laser therapy. Um, the next week, I ran into Gary here, the, the Theralase rep for, for Canada, and he told me a little bit about Theralase, and at the end of the day, I had purchased one and I've been using it ever since, and now I am raving to all my colleagues out there about this because it does some great things for your practice. Uh, and that's what we're going to go through today. As far as techniques go in my history, you can see for, for the chiropractors out there, you're seeing like glare upper cervical and then cold laser therapy. So you're probably thinking, well, what is he doing? Uh, what I'm doing is I'm helping the community. That's the bottom line. We're not all all one thing and uh, patients come in with a bunch of different issues where chiropractic alone may not be the best option or the only option. So that's where laser comes into to playing a great game in your practice. So the three main types of pain that you, you see in any healthcare practice is somatic, neuropathic, and visceral pain. The most common one being visceral pain. This is the pain that people feel. Uh, it's usually in some type of tissue. Um, it's causing constant discomfort and it can be acute and it can also be chronic issues that people have been dealing with for a long time. Uh, neuropathic pains are uh, referral pains from nerve root lesions or nerve interference or impingements or swelling. Um, this isn't pathology 101, so we're not gonna we're not gonna go through that. We're gonna talk more about the laser. I'd like to spend more time on that. But if you have any specific questions on the science, uh, when you ask the questions at the end, maybe Paul will help me out with how the the laser truly works. But as far as patient outcome and patient treatments, I'll be more than happy to um, answer personal questions that you may have. So go ahead, is that good, Paul? Do you want to move over to the next slide? Um, so chronic pain, it, it's out there. Uh, studies have shown, that maybe you've read this, uh, read this in the past, that 85% of people will experience low back pain due to work-related injuries, either sitting at a desk or lifting heavy uh, equipment, wherever it may be. But 27% of uh, Canadian seniors alone uh, have suffered from chronic pain. Um, one in 10 Canadians at a young age, between their teens to 40 years of age, will suffer from some type of chronic pain. This usually happens because we're getting into school, we're sitting with bad posture, and then we're into our sports. Those are our sporting years and our high active uh, working years. And patients with chronic pain are more likely than those without pain to respond negatively to measurements for well-being. And all this statistics are there. So let's keep going here and I'll get to my nitty gritty. So non-thermal lasers, there's different types of lasers that are out there. There's grade 1, 2, 3, 3B, 4. And uh, 4 is the cosmetic type lasers that you may hear about in rejuvenation clinics and in operating rooms. These are the ones that are thermal and they can actually cut skin or, or um, remove wrinkles, remove rosacea. They actually heat up issue, uh, areas of the skin. What we're using is one that's a pulsating laser and the pulse is there for a reason. It's there to prevent any heat accumulation from building up. So the patient will never feel that something's hot or burning. I'll tell you a quick little story about my new chiropractor that just joined us last week. She did her first laser therapy on somebody with a, with a tattoo and, and it, it burned. But I'll tell you why you can't do that through a tattoo in a second here. So go ahead, Paul, let's talk about the laser. Um, there's there's two lasers that come with the Theralase, and that's what really got me. I'm definitely a scientific-based chiropractor. In order to persuade me to change my ways, you're going to need a lot of facts. And Gary did a great job when he taught me about the Theralase. Uh, he said, you know, there's there's nine lasers on this thing, and the 660 and the 905 both have their methods of healing. The 660 is the ATP fast pathway. This is the pathway that I teach my patients about. I'm like, this is why we're doing laser. We're going to use their lasers to go in there and speed up the ATP pathway. So whatever damaged tissue you have, 
it will start to regenerate at a higher rate because of the increased production of ATP. So they like that. None of them know what I'm talking about, but it's great teaching method to show them, listen, we're taking this enzyme and we're speeding it up big time and it's going to increase your healing capacity. So instead of a sprained ankle taking you six weeks to heal from, hopefully in the next two or three weeks, we're going to get this all said and done. And you can be back to your squash games or whatever, maybe soccer games. The 905 pathway is the inflammation pathway. Uh, I don't teach much about it. And that's the one that's increasing uh, nitrous oxide pathways. If you remember from your biology classes, nitrous oxide is a vasodilator. And that's where you get the healing principle happening as well. Pushes inflammation away, gets a lot of blood into the tissue, and then the 660 nanometer lasers can do their work and help regenerate tissue through increased ATP production. Um, and then the decreased pain is through the lipid absorption pathway. So the tissues around the, 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 the lipids around the tissues that you're working with also are stimulated through the lasers at the 605 or the 905 pathway as well and decrease um, inflammation and pain reception as well, which is great. So most patients will feel something on the first visit. They'll feel, yeah, doc, you know, I can I feel better as you're doing it. Or by by the next treatment when they come in, they said, yeah, the first one, you know, I'm still, I still feel the pain, but it felt better when I left the office. Something along those lines. Okay, let's go to the next one. And I'll go through specific types of uh, conditions because these things can be different. Like, these are the common things that you'll see in your offices, no matter whether you're a PT or a chiropractor or a massage therapist, whatever you're doing, these are the most common types of conditions that are treated both in practice and the laser is also a great thing to use as well. My acupuncturist is quite um, interested in the smoking sensation and the acupuncture stimulator thing. So we're going to look into that and see how those will work with him. That would be a great way in my practice. But for me, mostly we're using the acute uh, injuries, the musculoskeletal injuries, and the inflammatory conditions that I've been working with most of the time. Yes, go ahead. So here's some of the case studies I've put in and um, some from Theralase's archives as well. Um, knee pain is very common as well. Most people that are athletic or as the years go by, arthritis and osteoarthritis like to cause damages in the knees, the ankles, the hands. Um, and that's what we see a lot of in our practice as well. 40% of the adults in the Western world will have trouble with osteoarthritis at some point in, your, in their life. If you're a chiropractor and you look at x-rays quite often, usually this is what you're teaching your patient with uh, disc degeneration. You'll see it uh, whether they're in their 40s or 60s, things start to develop. Um, and they increase over time. And as our populations are growing, it's increasing as well. So go ahead, uh, Paul, on the next slide there. So some of my patients uh, and my case studies, uh, Sarah, who was just in again today, 14-year-old um, with Osgood slaughters. You see, you may see this in some of your younger patients. Um, typical class case, if you look up what Osgood slaughters is and the diagnosis and prognosis, you'll see sports aggravate the condition. Uh, it's tender to the touch. Anyways, long story short, I told her how bad is the pain when it hurts. She said five out of ten, and literally within two weeks, we did treatments every other day. She was zero out of 10 and she still is. And I asked her today, how's it been? The last laser treatment she had was maybe three months ago. Uh, how's it been? Great, I can do everything. I was just at camp for the summer. I, we did water skiing, we did all the stuff, it was great. But when I put pressure on that one spot on my knee, it's a little tender and I told her, don't worry, you'll probably grow out of that. And we always have laser here for her for palliative care. If she ever is sore, we've used it once. And she comes back in, does it once and she feels great. So that's an easy one. Uh, we have some more knee studies here. Lynn, another one as well, a little bit younger than than Sarah, another Osgood Slaughters. This was four treatments. I'm just I'm I'm starting off with these great result cases to show you how great it really is for easy things. I could talk about plantar fasciitis all day. In our practice, the laser I could just mark it for plantar fasciitis and it would be worth it tenfold for sure because the results are amazing. I use a little bit of active release for plantar fasciitis patients and then the laser 
So we use that both in the same treatments. And within two to three treatments, patients are really happy. Complex cases can take 10 to 12. And for those patients, if you have access to orthotic therapy or anything like that, that's a great candidate to put them into an arch support or an orthotic to help them with that. But for uh, knee, let's stay on the knee here. These and they can be they can be very difficult. An arthritic patient, uh, laser works well on palliative care. Let's be realistic. Osteoarthritis of the knee isn't going to be something that you're going to treat and correct. The osteoarthritis is something you're going to try and keep uh, pain and inflammation away from. And the laser is the best best thing for that. So yeah, Lynn had four treatments and it was zero. And I haven't seen her for a little bit, but she's been doing great. She's a gymnast and been doing well there. So let's go on to the next one. I think we have one more knee. Uh, or elbows. There you go. So elbows. Um, tennis elbows is very common. Golfer and tennis elbows. 30% uh, of repetitive tasks from hand workers suffer from tennis elbows. So a lot of our trades and electricians uh, will have some type of elbow tendonitis or tendinosis going on. Um, if they do play tennis or golfer, I, I find this funny that we call it golfer's elbow. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but a lot of the golfers out there don't have golfer's elbow. <laughs> it's a lot, tennis players do, but uh, a lot of the golfers don't usually have elbow issues. They usually have low back or shoulder issues. So I always found that funny, but typically um, they can last for six to 48 months, depending on what type of chronic pain it is. And the statistic there is really, if they start to get tendonitis, it's not really going to get better unless you do some type of therapy. Uh, so that's why it can last up to 48 months. It's not that you're just going to sit there for four years with tennis elbow and it's just going to get better. I, I think usually by the second year, people are, are out there exploring options for pain relief. And by the fourth year, they're feeling better. Okay, let's keep moving here. So Jackie was a 45-year-old uh, female with tennis elbow. She had them on both sides. Um, that's how she heard about our office. She heard about the laser. She was a direct laser referral from a friend. She came on in. And these things, like I said, this is a chronic condition. She's had it for a long time. And it's been getting worse to the point where now she, she owns a dog grooming business. So she can't even groom the dogs. We started off three times a week. We were doing some other chiropractic care for her hip and, and some other issues she had, but after 12 visits, she was uh, another raving fan. And that's what I love about the lasers. You, you create raving fans. No matter what your main modality is, um, it's something that brings patients into the office. And um, most of the time, it's a, it's a modality that you use for them, but other times it's a teaching tool telling them, listen, this is a chronic condition. Your job or the sports that you're playing are causing the issue, and you, you can teach them you know, about your modalities, chiropractic, how that's going to help you moving forward, physical therapy, massage therapy, how these things are going to help you maintain this so you can continue enjoying your work-life balance and the athletics that you're doing. So she was impressed so much that because we were working on her hip with our uh, chiropractic, she said, can you try the laser on my SI joint as well? And after four treatments of that, she was, again, ecstatic about that so that was a, that's a cool patient she still comes in for regular care go ahead Paul yeah John um, he's a marketer and he's uh, he's a, actually markets our practice and he's been suffering from elbow issues for years maybe even 10 years it got to the point where he's like you know what can you do anything for me and we started with uh, active release and cold laser therapy as well. He still does it once a week. He's still coming in because it's not 100%. His left one is at 100% and his right one, he still rates a, a one out of 10. Um, that's a typo there. After 10 visits, pain on the right was 10 out of, oh no, one out of 10, that's right, after 10 visits. So he was happy there. Uh, laser still continued it once a week. And I just want to show you the differences between the modalities and how you can intertwine these things. And I find active release and Graston and some of these soft tissue modalities work so great with the laser because you're addressing both the inflammation and the scarred tissue or the fibrotic tissue at the same time. So that's great there. And he still works, you know, 50 hours a week on the computer and he's still doing great with all the treatments that we're doing. So go ahead there, Paul. Great. Oh, okay. We do have plantar fasciitis. Uh, we'll talk about that too. I, I'm a, a raving fan of this with my ankle history and with probably, I would say maybe, we've got to be approaching 100 patients now. I've had the laser since 2004, 2011. So 
we have to be approaching 100 plantar fasciitis uh, studies in just in our office that we've done and maybe 20% of them are put in, in, a, in an orthotic, but uh, the laser itself is what's reducing the inflammation and getting rid of, of these issues. There are settings on the Theralase laser for bone spurs, plantar fasciitis, Morton's neuroma. So there are different frequencies that Theralase has already done the research and figured out for you what to do and uh, changes the power and output for that. And it does make a difference. People with Morton's neuroma do notice more uh, results with the uh, with the right protocol. So seven percent, um, or sorry, uh, North studies have showed that adults over the age of sixty five found that seven percent had tenderness be beneath the heel, and that could be for many reasons. As we age, we lose the fat pad that's underneath our heel, which puts more more direct pressure onto the calcaneus, which can create bone spurs, pull on the fascia. Um, our arches collapse over time. We live in a concrete jungle now so everything's flat our shoes are flat we walk on pavement so plantar fasciitis is popular i know no matter what your modality is or whatever your career is out there i'm sure you have helped patients with plantar fasciitis so these patients as quick as two treatments now don't don't quote everyone that when i get a new patient and i always tell them we're going to give this you know 10 i always two di two digit treatment protocols so that way in case it does take eight, 10, 12 visits, the patient's happy. Don't ever tell the patient, oh, you know, uh, two, three visits, because if it takes more, they, you kind of lose credibility there. So we always start with six to 12 visits uh, with patients. Uh, I like the 10 visit rule, because if you get it done in five, you look like a rock star, so it's, it's great. So let's move to the next slide there, Paul. Good, so here, here's Amber, 44-year-old, um, super active, three kids, they're all teens now. Um, we started off treatment for her three times per week. Uh, active release was given on the first two weeks, and then we kind of gave her a break from that and continued on with uh, the laser. We were adjusting for some other headache issues that she was having, and um, Protocol 61 is already programmed on the Theralase as plantar fasciitis, and after three treatments, she went from um, 2 out of 10 from a 6 out of 10 right there was her pain scale and then after five she was super happy and I think we ended up doing eight eight treatments just to make sure she was good and then two weeks later her orthotics came in from uh, the orthotic group and we had her in those and she's been happy ever since and then that was two years ago and I, I just saw her a couple months ago again she's like hey you know what my feet have been pretty good let's just do another treatment and she just threw it in there and wanted it done which is great we'll go over how to um, use practice management techniques in this and how to charge for the laser and all this in a second, if you're wondering. Okay, next slide, Paul. Alana, a little bit uh, a little bit of an older patient, right foot pain when walking, just on the one side. Um, she said specific things like edges and heels were making, making the pain worse, which I think they're one of her causes of plantar fasciitis in the first place. Uh, the whole thing we recommend first thing is over two weeks. So that's, that would be the smallest care plan I would give a patient. And after two visits, she was really happy with the. And after four, she was saying zero out of 10 or maybe one out of 10. So we continued with the full six treatments and uh, another happy patient there. Yeah, go ahead, Paul. Uh, back and hip pain. These are complex issues for all of us. I think uh, back pain is pretty much wrapped up with physiotherapy and chiropractic. Uh, however, as physiotherapists and chiropractors, we deal with this, and sometimes they're a conundrum. 31% um, of Canadians report activity limitations due to back pain, and 15% of low back pain sufferers uh, are absent from work. So when I do corporate talks and I go out to, to businesses and corporations and I tell them, listen, 15% uh, of your employees are going to take time off work, which costs you money just because of back pain. Do you think maybe having some type of regular uh, treatment or care to help maintain posture and back pain is a good thing? And that's where the laser plays a great role as well. Because when patients come in, almost everyone says they have a sore low back. So the results here are a little bit different with back pain because back pain stems from a bunch of different things and we're not going to get too deep into the science of back pain because we could be here all day, but I want to show you how the laser can be effective with some specific cases that I've noticed in my practice. You know, go ahead, Paul. We all have access to research. You can go on online and there's tons of research. You can look into what works. Uh, some of you have other modalities that you're doing which gets great results. Continue doing those things. but. I'm a real person, a real clinic owner, like maybe some of you, uh, a 
a practitioner like you, I'm sharing your stories or my stories with you to show you what's happening in my practice. I am not, um, Theralase does not pay me for every Theralase machine that they sell or anything like that. I'm just here helping out Paul and Gary because they've helped my practice. So I feel like giving back an hour of my time on a webinar is a no-brainer. So I hope you take this with a grain of salt, but this is what's truly happening. I'm in Calgary. I'm not too far from most of you guys, um, and I'm sure my patient base is similar to your patient bases. Um, so hopefully you learn a little bit from there. So Mark uh, was a 51-year-old with the typical low back pain kind of stiff in the morning, gets a little bit better through the day, but if he tries anything different like a, a hockey game or, or squash, it makes it worse. So we started doing some chiropractic care, and to be honest with you, he was getting a little bit better, but we weren't getting too far with it. So I said, let's just go into laser therapy. Let's just try laser therapy and see how it goes. And after six treatments over two weeks, he was ecstatic. He was really happy about that. And then chiropractic be became the better modality moving forward because we were able to keep him well after after he was well. See, sometimes we get our egos in the way and we think we can fix everything with the modality that we're doing, but really there's other things that can work better. So he had a, a typical inflammatory case of the low back and uh, laser was, was the best bet. Okay, move on to the next one. Lori, 58 year old. Um, I do have my own x-ray machine in the office if you're wondering why you keep seeing x-rays on here. So I do take x-rays on patients when there's mechanical issues going on. So that's a nice little luxury to have. But uh, laser therapy was recommended for 12 treatments over four weeks. And after three treatments, she had 50% improvement. It's, it, I'm just showing you how long it takes and how much improvement patients are getting, how fast. So it's such an easy way to keep patients coming back as long as they're noticing something. And I'm sure you've learned that through your practices. After each treatment, if things are, are getting better or changes are happening, the patient is more likely to stick with the, with the recommendations. But when you get through six treatments and nothing's really changing, I think we're all on the same boat here. Both the patient starts to lose faith and as a practitioner, you're starting to think, okay, maybe there's something else that can be done to help you. So after six, 80% improvement, and after 12 treatments, bingo right there, again, right around that 10 mark, 100% improvement. So patient now continues twice per month with chiropractic care, and we perform six minutes of cold laser to help slow down uh, degeneration of the joint. So if you're wondering how long these things take, this was the big sell for me with Theralase. I was using another laser for my ankle when I told you that story about me spraining it back in 2010. Um, and I was sitting in, in my wife's office that she was an associate in, for about 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minute appointments, just lying down with this massive strap thing around my ankle that used mostly red lights. And um, it worked. It took, you know, about 10 to 12 visits, half an hour each, you know, there's six hours of my life of treatment for my ankle. I'm super grateful because I'm able to run again. But um, when Gary came into my office and he showed me the ankle sprain protocol and how it took uh, five minutes, two and a half minutes, two spots, I was like, whoa, 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 this is great. I can totally do it. I run a busy practice. I see two, 250, 250 visits a week um, for chiropractic. We don't count, we don't count act, um, laser and chiropractic as separate visits. We count that as one. So when a patient comes in for both, that's just one visit that counts as a visit. So I do about two, 250 a week. Um, I couldn't, when he came in, I said, no, there's no way I can add another modality like this, like traction or decompression or laser. I know they all they all do great, but I don't think I, can, I have the time to do it. And I know I can train someone to do it, but that costs money to have a specific person paid to do that uh, as a clinic owner. But when he told me, you know, anywhere between two and twelve minutes for these for these um, protocols, I was like, oh, I could definitely do that. And now we have an open bay type system where I can put the laser on one person, say, great, I'll be back in three minutes when this beeps. I'm going to go help another patient in the meantime. And usually I'm bouncing between a couple patients to get that done. So it works really well there too. Uh, next slide there. While I'm pulling up the questions, uh, because we haven't had a few questions submitted, could you speak to practice management and billing? Yeah, for sure. So in our office, we charge $50 for a visit. That's how it kind of works here in, in Alberta. We're doing $50 for an adult visit. There's seniors and student discounts as well. And then we charge $30 for laser. 